Hi everyone, and welcome back to my channel. I'm Andrew Connell. In today's video, I wanna follow up on Microsoft's recent announcement about the Microsoft 365 developer program that they shared on April the 23rd. Uh, last week, I shared a video breaking down Microsoft's announcement um, about the developer program. The title of their uh, announcement was Exciting Updates Coming to the Microsoft 365 Developer Program. Now, many of you have been reaching out to me since I posted that video, both in leaving comments on the video, um, as well as on my article about a bunch of things that we didn't really know about in that announcement. Um, I also have questions. You're not the only one. And the more I've thought about it, the more I have actually more questions because it wasn't so much of an announcement as it was kind of just like a, we hear you and we're doing some stuff, but there wasn't much substance to it. So I have a bunch of questions that I would love to share with you and just kind of see what you think as well with this. My biggest question is pretty straightforward. What is gonna make these new commercially available future dev tenants, how is it gonna make them different from a regular commercial tenant that I can go buy right now? You know, is this new dev tenant, is this gonna be like something, is it gonna be cheaper, less expensive than what I can get commercially today? Is it gonna have more flexibility associated with it? Especially when it comes to uh, when I wanna do Microsoft 365 Copilot uh, custom agent development. And speaking of Copilot, if there is a Copilot expense associated with this dev tenant, will I be able to turn it on and off when I'm not using it or maybe be able to use it between tenants? That way I'm not constantly gonna be spending money for something that's just sitting there. And another question, is it gonna include the full featured Microsoft 365 Copilot, not just that limited like consumption or metered experience? As I mentioned before, the consumption model, it only gives you the custom instructions and the custom actions that reach out to the real-time data sources that you don't get any of the grounding data uh, from Microsoft 365 or Microsoft Graph. Um, as, or one of the other knowledge sources that you can normally add uh, to your tenant. You might be like, wait, wait a minute. What are you talking about there? Why is that? Because to get that functionality, you need something called the semantic index. The semantic index, when Microsoft says that they're grounding your data from Microsoft Graph, they're being truthful, but really what they're doing is they're pulling data or they're doing searches against something called the semantic index. The semantic index is, is an index, uh, it's a semantic, index of content that's inside of Microsoft Graph, which makes it uh, much easier and much more attuned for um, AI-based queries. So the semantic index though, it isn't provisioned in your Microsoft 365 tenant until you have at least one Microsoft 365 Copilot license at $30 per user per month. So right now, if you wanna do any serious development with a tenant and build agents with full functionality, you really need to buy at least one of those Microsoft 365 Copilot licenses with a one-year commitment uh, for $30 per user per month. That, plus you're going to have another license that you can actually use the Microsoft 365 Copilot license with. I suggest the Microsoft 365 Business Essentials license. Now that means your entire cost for your developer tenant is going to be about $432 a year. Will the new dev tenant cost less than this? Will it have more flexibility? These are all questions that we just don't have any answers to yet. I've got some wishes associated with those questions. For example, one of the things I'm really hoping for is that we get features that are similar to what we have with something called the CDX program. If you don't know what the CDX program is, it stands for the Customer Digital Experiences. And it was a program where partners can create uh, Microsoft 365 tenants with specific features enabled for different scenarios like business intelligence, collaboration, et cetera. These tenants were perfect for demos. You could spin one up, show it to a customer, and then throw it away when you were all done. You were active for 90 days or up to a year, and you could have a few of them going at once. So when I had access to CDX at one point, I could spin up, I think it was two, maybe three, maybe only one of the 90-day tenants. And then I, would, I had an option to, sometimes I could renew it, but sometimes I just had to throw it away. They were truly disposable, but I couldn't have lots of them created for different things. And then I can have one of the one-year tenants available to me as well. As a developer, that is exactly what I want. If I'm a teacher teaching a class or speaking at a conference, or if I'm a developer and I'm attending a class, or I wanna do a lab, or I am doing something on Microsoft Learn, or I'm working on a project, or I'm one working on two or three projects for clients, I wanna quickly create a tenant and just throw it away when I'm finished with it for that specific use case. 
Another great thing about those CDX tenants was the sample content. They came populated with calendar events, emails, contacts, SharePoint documents, content in SharePoint pages, uh, SharePoint lists, Teams messages, meeting transcripts, a ton of dummy data. But it, what it did is it gave us a realistic environment for, that we could use for development and testing. That's great. Now, if I could make a wish to Microsoft today, it would be give me a way to buy access to what I call what they call the CDX tenants and the CDX program. Let me apply certain licenses to those tenants as needed. Really, what I what I really want is I really want to be able to have to pay for CDX. I want to be able to have access to it. And then I want to buy maybe one or two of the business essentials licenses and maybe a Microsoft 365 Copilot license. And then I want to be able to just move them around to the different tenants as I see fit. That's what I would really like to have the ability to do. And maybe I've got low quotas and stuff like that. That's fine, but the tenants can't stay around forever. That system already exists. Now the, the CDX program exists, not the ability to go through and to buy a license and just use it all over the place. I'd love to be able to do this. I'd love to buy as many as I need for specific projects or conferences or classes, whatever it is. And if that means that I need to make a one-year commitment and spend something on it, I don't, I mean, it depends on the price, but I think that's totally worth it. Or if I want to use it on a month-to-month -month basis at a slightly higher cost instead of an annual commitment, because I don't want to make that long-term commitment, fine, give me that option too. I'd love to have that option. That would be absolutely awesome. I know a lot of you today are still like, well, but if I need a development environment right now, what am I supposed to do? Well, it's a good question. And unfortunately, the only thing we got is that same commercial offering that I've mentioned before. So it really is going to depend on what kind of development you're doing. So if you're just doing basic, I want to get in the door and I want to play with Microsoft 365, get a Microsoft 365 Business Essentials license. It is $7.20 a month per user when you only do a month to month commitment. So I could use it for two months, spend less than $15, cancel it, I'm good to go. Or you can get it for $6 per user per month if you make a one year commitment and then it'll be still paid out $6 a month, but it'll only come out to $72 a year. Now, if you're gonna do co-pilot development, you wanna do like co-pilot uh, Microsoft 365, use like the, the toolkit to build declarative agents, well, you're gonna to wanna to also have knowledge uh, with those agents as well. I seriously doubt you're gonna to wanna to build an agent and only do custom instructions and um, uh, like real-time data sources with actions. You're not gonna to wanna to do that. You're gonna to wanna to spend the $30 per user per month to get the semantic index inside that tenant, which means you're gonna to have to buy the Microsoft 365 Copilot $30 per user per month license. And that has a one-year commitment, which means you're gonna spend $360 a year. Add it all up. And that's $432 a year for your development option if that's what you're going to do. Now, again, there may be other things that you need inside of this tenant for uh, different licensing things that you would need. And that would obviously add to the cost, maybe increase the business essentials license because you need to go with something like an E3 or an E5. It just depends on what you're doing. But that's kind of what I'd be looking at for a 12-month uh, developer environment. Now, by the time Microsoft rolls out this new program, we might have better options, but if you need something in the next month or two, I wouldn't hold your breath. That's ex this, what I just showed you, that's what I do. So I'm speaking, I'm being honest. I still have one of those old legacy dev tenants, uh, the one that I got from their dev program, but I also have another tenant that I use just for development like this that has a paid, it's a, a paid commercial tenant that has a business essentials license on it. And then I've added a bunch of my own content to it. And then I've gone through and I use it uh, with a, a Microsoft 365 Copilot uh, the $30 per user per month. So that's what I do as well. Now, I would love to hear what you think about this. What are your biggest questions about these developer tenants? What features would you like to see? What do you think about my proposal here? Do you like it? Uh, do you dislike it? Drop a comment below and let me know. Remember, if you learned anything from the last time I did something like this, when I asked Microsoft, you know, here's a pitch. Here's what I hope that you guys do about a new dev program and a, and a, a paid solution. They, they're listening. They're paying attention to all of this. And they're trying to make things better for developers. So we can get this feedback and we can send it back to them. And who knows, we may have an impact on it. Now, if you found this video helpful, please hit that like button and subscribe for more Microsoft 365 development content. I would really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. And I hope to see you in my next video.